All right, so welcome back to the channel. And today um, I'm talking about one of my most requested videos ever since everyone found out that I'm um, studying journalism at CSM. Everyone has just been like, oh, um, can you tell us, give us tips on how to get into CSM or your portfolio? And it's a bit strange because most people go to CSM to study fashion design. And considering I'm studying fashion communication and journalism, it's like, why do people want to hear my opinion? But for those people that have been asking, um, this is a dedicated video and I'm going to go through the whole application process from the beginning to the end and kind of give you tips on just like stuff I did um, that eventually led to me being accepted um, into CSM. So first things first, when you apply to CSM, um, they look at your grades um, and then based on your grades, they then make you write an 800 word essay. An 800 word essay is any topic about contemporary fashion. So you could write literally about anything. One reason why I didn't think I was going to get into CSM is because all my subjects prior to applying to CSM was all science. Everything I've ever studied was science. And I thought to study journalism, you need to study subjects like A-levels, like English, history, essay subjects. Um, so I was quite surprised that I even got through to the first stage not having any essay subjects. And I feel like a big reason as to why um, I'm going to get into this later as to why I even got into CSM in the first place is because I have industry experience. Um, so because of that, because I don't have a essay subject background, I'm doing a lot of work in the background to make sure that when I get to CSM, my writing is not mediocre. And shout out to my parents, because um, my parents helped me a lot in this application process. And they're always drilling into my head, you're not at the writing level that you should be at, so don't get complacent and think you're this sick guy because you need to work on your writing skills. Um, so I just thank shout out to my parents because they're always um, bringing me back down to earth. But yeah, to my surprise, I got through the first stage um, having only science subjects. So I wrote my 800 word essay on cultural appropriation and fashion. Um, so I'm gonna put the essay on the screen and if you want to read it, you can pause the video and just read the whole article, basically. So after I wrote that article and submitted it, I think I had to wait one week and then they, they'll get back to you um, and tell you if you've made it to the interview stage. And I'm not sure how the educational system is any, anywhere else in the world, but in the UK, if you study journalism, anything to do with journalism, it's actually a legal like, thing in place that everyone that studies journalism, no matter what school, um, has to do an interview at some point. Um, I don't know why journalism's like that, but yeah, just how it is. So a week later, um, I got an email basically saying that I had gotten through to the interview stage. And with the interviews, there's like many different dates you can choose based on your circumstances. There was like five different dates. So when they um, hold interviews, it's not just like one day where everyone goes and then everyone does that interview. It's like over the course of like five weeks where they just have one day dedicated to like doing interviews. So before I even talk about like what happened in my interview, I have to talk about my portfolio because basically what you use in the interview is your portfolio. So obviously your portfolio is really, really important. And I feel like a lot of students that went to the interview based on the day I went, they didn't do a lot of research into the type of things they should have brought um, to the interview, all the type of things that should have been in their portfolio. So when I was going for the interview, they gave us two things to bring. So they told us to bring a portfolio and they also made us write another um, essay. And that was supposed to be about um, 800 word essay on how Vogue can improve and appeal to a younger audience. To me, it just seemed like they were trying to get market research for Vogue or something like that. But yeah, so I went with that essay and of course my portfolio. Now I did loads of research on like, what exactly do they expect? What is a good journalism portfolio? Now, of course, written work is a must. Like you, how can you be a journalist and you don't have written work? That's like, if you don't have written work, don't even bother. So written work was one. And then I read somewhere that they do not like big portfolios. So you know how like people compile all their work when they go to like CSM interviews in this massive book no one is gonna read that, genuinely. Once they see it, they're just not even gonna look at your um, portfolio book. And literally, that is what happened on that day. People that had 
all these massive books, none of their like portfolios got looked at, which was crazy. So I did research and I found that the sweet spot for a portfolio is between six to 10 um, pages. So what you have to do is you summarize all your experience and then in the interview, there will be opportunities where you can expand on basically what you've written in your portfolio. So you don't have to write everything and have a whole textbook of things you've done and take that to the interview basically. So going to the interview day, um, first things first, they gave us a tour of the CSM, just CSM the school in general. Like I've been to CSM many different times before for many other reasons. Um, but yeah, it was cool to see the library and all the different facilities they have. And then after the tour, um, we went straight into the interviews. And on this day that I did my interview, I was actually the last. So it was quite good because I got to see everyone's reaction and I got to see people talking about like what went wrong in their interviews, what went well. Um, so that gave me kind of like a slight edge in terms of preparing. And it's not like I plan to be last, they just like choose randomly um, who goes in, so yeah. And I don't think I should be talking about like all the specific questions they asked me in my interview. It was a long ass interview, it was like 30 something minutes, um, close to 40 minutes. But I don't, cause I'm not sure if they ask similar questions in subsequent years and I could get into trouble for that. So I'm not gonna tell you uh, what questions they asked me in my interview, but what I will do is show you my portfolio. Um, so I actually have it on my laptop here so we can go through it um, page by page essentially. So page one, of course it just says fashion journalism portfolio and then it has my name on it. And of course I numbered um, all the pages. So obviously this is page number one. Then the next portfolio. So another thing when I was doing my research on portfolios is that there's very, very basic questions that they always ask you in an interview. So every journalism interview I did, because CSM was not the only place I applied to, I applied to like loads of different places, did interviews for all those places. They always ask you, why do you want to study fashion journalism? And it's such a deep question because if you give them the wrong answer from when they ask you that question, they will literally just like not even consider you anymore. And that was part of the research I did. So I was like, I really have to think deeply into what fashion journalism is to me. So what I did was I had loads of time to prepare this answer and I just put it in my portfolio because I knew immediately I went into that interview, they were gonna ask me that question and I could just say, oh, um, I actually, I've written this down, but if you want me to talk about it, I can. And that also forces them to have to read your portfolio there and then and that increases the chances of them actually reading your portfolio. So of course, um, in my second page, it's an introduction page, so I have three questions. So the first one is, why do I want to study fashion journalism? So the answer I gave was, my future ambition is to start my own fashion publication that focuses specifically on emerging talent in fashion, especially in countries with limited fashion coverage. So I was talking about countries like, you know, Nigeria, where I'm from, there's a lot of hidden gems, um, but all of that stuff goes unnoticed because the fashion industry is very much Eurocentric. Um, and then I said, I believe a BA in fashion journalism would give me the opportunity to sharpen my skills whilst meeting with other students that I hope to learn from also. African fashion is on the rise and I would love to be part of its emergence on a wider scale. So that was my why do I want to study fashion journalism. So I didn't even have to um, answer this um, in my interview because I already had it here basically. So they just read it. So the next question I have here is what is journalism to me? So I wrote traditionally journalism was being very technical and savvy with writing. With the rise of many different forms of media, journalism is not so black and white anymore. Journalism in the current day is seen in the journalistic and analytical approach to which a person researches and finds a story, regardless of the form of media it is intended for. So obviously what I mean by that is before journalism was very much just writing for newspapers, but now there's so many different types of journalism from like video journalism, which is basically what I do on YouTube. And I talked about that later in my portfolio. And there's also things like making documentaries, there's so many different forms. 
So you can't really say journalism is just about analytical writing anymore. And that's why I said, I said it's more the analytical approach to which a person does what they do, basically. And then the third question is, what do I hope to achieve? So I wrote, as a fashion journalist, I hope to educate the masses about the history of fashion in a way that the everyday person can understand. I hope to create an African fashion publication that is as widely respected as publications like Sister Magazine and Vestoy. Um, so yeah, literally speaks for itself. Um, like I said, you have to keep it short and sweet. Like I said, I won't tell you exactly what questions they asked me. Obviously, you guys know that they asked me what do I, why do I want to study fashion journalism, all these basic questions. Um, but I also had to expand on these points. That's why your portfolio shouldn't be massive because you can summarize here and then what they're going to do in the interview is ask you, okay, can you expand, elaborate on what you mean by that? Or they might pick out a sentence that you write in your portfolio and be like, okay, what exactly does that mean? Like explain that part. So going on to the next page, this is some of my written work. I had many other um, articles that I wrote that aren't part of my portfolio. I just kind of brought them in as separate printouts. Um, but this once again is the cultural appropriation um, essay that they made us write in our application. Um, so I literally talked about it early in the video. If you want to read it, you can pause the video right now. So then page four, I talked about video journalism. So I basically talked about the YouTube channel and what I do with the fashion archives. So I wrote in 2017, I started a YouTube channel called the fashion archive. YouTube for a long time has just been a platform for entertainment and outfit videos as far as fashion goes. I saw a hole in the market. My platform is focused on deeply analyzing runway shows with references, as well as talking about the history of fashion. I've made documentaries, runway analysis videos, fashion history videos, and more with over 22,000 subscribers and over 750,000 total views. I have been able to share my passion with a loyal audience. So that is basically just me explaining what the fashion archive is without making it super long. And then I put screenshots of like different videos, like some of my favorite videos I've made, like the Antwerp Six, um, who is Ray Kyle Kubo, who is Paria Fazane, who is Vivian Westwood. Um, some of the reviews I've done as well, like Martin Rose, um, Kiko Kastanov, of A Cold Wall, their collections. And then in the bottom corner, I've written some other notable achievements. Once again, you don't have to, I could have made separate pages for everything I did, but once again, you have to keep it short and sweet. And in the interview, they will ask you about whatever you write in your portfolio. That's, that's if they're even interested in your portfolio, by the way, because there are a lot of people that came for the interviews and like no one even looked at their portfolios, um, which is bad. So for my notable achievements, I put uh, regular invites for London Fashion Week to analyze runway fashion shows. Then I wrote, I've been a guest panelist on Show Studio. That was quite recent, actually and then guest lecturer at the London College of Fashion, um, which I did quite recently as well. So it's really good to kind of put these on your portfolio, especially the fact that I, I've lectured at London College of Fashion is a big thing as someone that's going to be a student to someone like me who has actually managed to lecture. Um, they're like, wow, this guy's really serious and it makes them take you more seriously. So then the next page, page five, I've talked about photography. Now, the reason why photography was so important to talk about is because journalism and photography kind of go hand in hand. Anything in journalism, so I want to start my publication, hopefully at some point. Photography is a big part of having a magazine or a publication, so you have to understand photography. It's really important. And as a journalist, in the modern day, even in university now, if you study journalism, they teach you how to use cameras and their modules on like videography and photography because it's so integral to being um, a journalist in the digital age. So the fact that I've actually worked as a photographer for brands and done freelance work, I thought was a really important thing to talk about. So I've talked about my freelance work, so I wrote, my ability to create content comes from a deep understanding of cameras and how to operate them. I've been a freelance videographer and photographer for over five years with a huge bank of work. Journalists may be required to carry out interviews, assist on documentaries and much more. Journalists that have a deeper understanding of digital means of production set themselves apart. Um, so that's literally what I said about my freelance work. Then there's another section under 
that I titled post-production. So that's more like editing and stuff like that. Um, so I wrote, during my time as a freelance photographer and videographer, I have learned how to use various industry standard applications. This includes the Adobe applications, Lightroom, Premiere Pro, Photoshop, and Illustrator. This understanding of every aspect of photography and videography from start to end product has helped in having an eye for certain aspects of fashion. Not only will I be able to execute the photography for my publication, I have the ability to creatively direct other photographers who may create work for the publication. And that's really important once again, because if you don't understand anything about cameras or videography or photography, you're not really gonna have an ability to creatively direct stuff for any publication, really. Because you don't really, you don't even know what is possible, for, like photography-wise. Um, so it's really, really important to talk about photography. And when I went into my interview, they really liked this part of my portfolio a lot. Then going into page six, so I've talked about my work experience. Once again, keep it short. Um, not to toot my own horn, but I do have a lot of work experience. Part Partially because I'm so much older. Because when people apply to uni, they're like 18. I'm 22 now, so I've had four years to work in the industry, which 18 year olds don't have. Um, so I guess that's a slight edge I did have um, when applying. Um, I didn't put a lot of the work experience I've done on here. I didn't talk about Stella McCartney, but once again, you keep it short. And if they ask you about what else have you done apart from this, then, and that's another question they asked me, um, then you can expand. Oh, I've actually done worked at Stella McCartney. I've done this, I've done this for this brand, I've done that. So it's all about keeping it short. And I think the reason is there are so many interviews and so many people that apply to CSM that if you have a 100 page portfolio in this massive book, they don't have time to read it. And even it might, you might have the best work experience, but because the way you presented it was so cloggy, that can mean a difference between them looking at your portfolio and you being accepted or you not. So in the work experience um, section, I specifically talked about how my work experience is relevant to fashion journalism. So what I said was, my passion for fashion goes a lot further than a hobby. I have four months of work experience with a luxury sustainable women's wear brand known as Deploy London. During my time with Deploy, I learned all the basics of fashion design from sewing to pattern cutting and draping. This has been very valuable in my fashion journalism as I have a deeper understanding of various fashion design techniques which allow me to identify certain elements in a garment that other journalists may not. And this is really important because there are a lot of fashion journalists who have never designed a garment in their life. And in my internships, I've had to make clothes, I've had to learn how to make patterns, I've learned about patterns, I've learned about sewing. And because of that, I just understand what good construction looks like and what bad construction looks like and what it feels like. And I've, um, one my first internship, I was like buying fabrics um, for the brand, so I learned about different fabrics, what's a good quality fabric versus a bad one. And this really helps in journalism because a lot of journalists, they have a lot of knowledge about the history, they read a lot, but they don't have a lot of practical knowledge, which affects the way they write about garments because they can only write from an aesthetic standpoint, they can't write from a construction standpoint. So I feel like that gives me a slight edge. Um, in terms of journalism and of course you have to write about it anything that you feel like gives you an edge you have to put in your portfolio but also make it concise that's really important so then i went on to say my current role as a content creator for another luxury sustainable women's wear brand called Polones has also refined my photography and videography skills into a more professional setting i've worked at Polones for the past six months um so yeah basically self-explanatory then page seven, yeah, I think this is my last, um, so this is my last page of my portfolio. So I basically just talked about my other social media platforms like my Instagram. I have a photography Instagram page as well. And then I talked about um, what I did with Colted. And then I also talked about covering London Fashion Week with High Fashion Talk in 2019. And yeah, that was literally my whole portfolio. Short and simple, short and sweet. Um, there were many instances in my interview where I did have to expand on a lot of the points here. What I will say is the day I went for my interview, there were like 
maybe like six of us that had an interview that day. And I was one of the few people who they actually took in my essay and my um, portfolio. Like they collected it. They were like, can we keep this? I was like, yeah, take it. So, and everyone else that came out, well, not everyone else, but a lot of the people that came out of their interviews, uh, they didn't even look at their portfolios and they didn't even, because they told us to write that Vogue essay and bring it in. And a lot of them, they didn't even look at the Vogue essay that they told us to write, um, which is crazy. And I think, once again, all the candidates that I was there with were more than capable. They were, a lot of them had a lot of experience, but they just didn't go the extra mile and do research and like, what is a good portfolio? How many pages, it's so important. How many pages does your portfolio have to be? It's really important to make it concise. So yeah, that is literally, in my personal opinion, how I got into CSM um, to study fashion communication and fashion journalism. Um, hopefully, I don't know with this whole coronavirus thing, I was supposed to start in September, but we'll see um, when school starts again. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Uh, definitely looking forward to meeting all the people on my course, that'll be really fun. And yeah, I hope this video was helpful, mainly because so many people will ask me this question. Um, once again, the reason why most people go to Central St. Martins or apply there is for fashion design. So I'm quite sorry if I didn't help you with that. Um, but this video was mainly for the few people that were asking me about studying fashion journalism um, at CSM. And I know this is gonna be in the comments. If you're wondering why I'm wearing a jacket indoors, my heating stopped working and it's cold as hell. So yeah. And but yeah, on that note, uh, stay tuned for more videos and hopefully I've been able to help uh, whoever was wondering about this topic.